Welcome to some new r slash petty revenge stories, where people share small victories over those that wronged them. I hope you had a great day. The first story is called $125. Once upon a time, I was a travel agent and accepted a job at a small family run agency in Austin. Both owners also worked there, along with their daughter, and they were not good managers. They were also really cheap. When I joined, I brought the agency a ton of business, including a very big corporate account. When I'd finally had enough of all this stupid inter-office conflict, I applied and got a job at another agency, where I had always wanted to work and gave two weeks notice. Instead, I was escorted out the door within minutes of giving my notice. This was back in the medieval days when we all had our Rolodex where we kept our important contacts and the owners refused to allow me to take it with me. I knew the names and numbers of all the clients that I wanted to take with me anyway, so whatever. I had worked there for two years by this point. Eight months prior, the owners had sent me on a familiarization trip, which was a pretty customary way to allow an agent to experience a destination, in order to better sell it. As I had never skied before, they sent me to Crest Boutte for four days. The entire trip cost them $125, which included my airline ticket, shuttle, lodging, ski pass, equipment and one morning of beginner lessons. Meals were on me, which was fine. When I received my last paycheck, they had written on the stub that they had deducted the $125. Again, whatever. I immediately spent the entire morning calling everyone that I had ever worked with there, whether I really enjoyed working with them or not. If they had spent money with me, they got a call. Everyone. The big account came with me, along with 99% of the clientele including those clients that I had developed through the last agency. Ran into the American Airlines rep at a function about 6 months later. He told me that the owner had whined and complained that I cost him $250,000 in that time period alone. All for a measly $125. The next story is called Her Rent Backfired. I work at a rather famous home supply and maintenance store. A month or so ago, Karen and her husband came in to buy an appliance. They happened to come on a very busy day and we only had two people in appliances, one of whom was going on her lunch. Well, apparently Karen wasn't happy that a couple of men who'd already been waiting were served ahead of her and pitched a tantrum, even going so far as to go up to the girl leaving for her lunch, who was no longer in uniform and was talking to another employee and berating her for ignoring her. The girl told her multiple times that she wasn't on the clock and Karen informed her it didn't matter, she would help her right then. The girl told her she could wait or take her business elsewhere and went about her business. This apparently set off Karen and her husband as he proceeded to call customer service. I happened to be covering their desk. He began yelling at me that he was a GD man and that if we were gonna serve other men before his wife we would effing serve him first. I laughed at him, said that's not how things work and hung up the phone. We don't take abuse at my store. I definitely refuse to and the managers generally support us in that. The funny part? Our town has a local Facebook page where you can post reviews and events. Karen decided to make a massive post about what happened. Only she actually didn't. She twisted it so that it seemed she'd been purposely ignored. She hadn't, she just didn't want to wait in line. Denied service? She wasn't. She'd confronted and cursed at our teenage employee who was off the clock. And she and her husband had been verbally abused by every employee in the store. They had spoken to the girl and to me, and neither of us abused them. We were both abused. Of course, at first she got sympathy from a lot of women of the same mentality. A lot of no one wants to work anymore comments. But one of our cashiers happened to be told about it and showed me. I am petty. I'll admit it beforehand. I made a fake Facebook account and joined the town's page. Needless to say, I first commented in explicit detail everything that actually happened, including direct quotes from the other girl. Then to sink the screw you carrying knife a little deeper, I copied my post and replied to every comment on her post. This isn't actually what happened. What happened was, insert comment here. Within moments the entire town turned on her. Hundreds of comments calling her a liar and a horrid person. The next morning, the post was gone and she'd never return to our store. The third story is called Expectations. 
Back when F-150 Raptors were hot and hard to get, I was selling a car at our dealership. We were one of the few dealerships not playing any games on the Raptors. The deal was MSRP minus any rebates you qualify for plus our $299 dealer fee and TTL, which was super reasonable. Then came Tom. First off, he thought he was going to haggle and it got so bad that I straight up told him, here's your deal. If you like it, let my manager over there know and we'll take a deposit and order the vehicle, but I have other customers to attend to. Then I got up and left to meet my appointment. Tom was scheduled for noon and it was now 3 pm, a full 3 hours later. While Tom sat at my desk for a solid 15 to 20 minutes, I saw him get up and walk over to my manager's office. My manager ended up taking his deposit, explaining the process and sending him off. Out of the over 1000 customers I've sold, there was only one customer that I did that to and it was Tom. Tom was special. It got worse. Tom forged a dealer offer sheet from a competing dealer, trying to get us to give him a $3000 discount. Tom called our Auto Group HQ several times to complain. Tom called Ford HQ several times to complain. Tom was repeatedly caught in lies. His lies would normally be, manager said, or he said, when we didn't. A few weeks before his vehicle was due, he sent out a massive email that included our CSRs, myself, my manager, my GM, basically listing his demands and being incredibly unreasonable. A few hours before that email, a customer inquired about an F-150 Raptor, but unfortunately the order bank had closed and we had none in stock. We never had any in stock, but this new customer seemed super nice. So I went to the GM and said, let's sell this Raptor to this new guy who seems super chill and nice and can easily afford it. And let's refund this jerk his money and tell him we can do business with him. My GM agreed. So my GM told me to write up the email and CC certain individuals. I wrote up the email. Dear Tom, after careful consideration of your last email and your past experience, we've decided we can meet your expectations and wouldn't want you to be disappointed in your vehicle. Therefore, we have decided to refund your money. We have instructed our accounting department to cut a check and overnight it to the address on file. You will be receiving a refund in full. We hope you can find a dealership that can match your expectations. We wish you all the best. Then I called up my customer from earlier. Hey man, we got a new Raptor that just became available. I can send you the window sticker and it's yours for MSRP plus 299 dealer fee plus TTL. After I did that, Tom called me, furious, telling us how he was going to sue us. I passed the call to my GM, who gave him our law firm's phone number and told him his lawyer could talk to our lawyer and asked Tom not to call back again. Then the new customer from that morning called me back and said he was on the way to meet me to place a deposit and start on the paperwork. The last story is called Airplane Seat. For those of you who fly frequently, this may be an all too familiar situation. This usually happens when the person behind you or someone in their row needs to use the bathroom mid-flight. People have started using the back of my seat as a method to pull themselves up out of their chairs as opposed to using their own armrests. They usually pull the seat back 3 or 4 inches due to their leverage and let it go once they are standing. If you are the one in the chair in front of them, this provides you with a sudden unpleasant feeling of your chair unexpectedly rocketing back followed by a quick reversal launching you forward. A real jerk move. 95% of time, the person who does this either does not apologize or is oblivious to their actions. When this happens to me now, I bide my time, waiting for the person's return. Upon their return, but before they sit, I make sure the button that reclines the seat is fully pressed in. The person generally expects the seat is going to provide the same resistance they used to get out of their seat in the first place. Sorry friend. That resistance is gone. Hearing that sweet shock gas as they fall hard into their seat has been one of the new pleasures I found in flying. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel for more content. Let me know what you think about the stories in the comment section below. Have a great day. Bye bye.